today's Tableau user group Ireland, the virtual Tableau user group Ireland, uh, the last one of the year. Uh, you're all very good for coming along. We're just going to wait a minute or two. Um, there is about 100 people who've signed up, so um, we're, which is a great number. And uh, so we're just going to wait and see uh, how many we get in in the next two or three minutes. And, uh, and then we can go uh, from there and take it from there. So look, I'm just going to give you a quick intro. I mean, if this, as I said, this is the last um, user group of the year, and it seems uh, like such a long time ago since we had David Okineja and Sharon Allen at our last face-to-face -face user group. That was back in February, would you believe, only. And uh, if you remember, it was actually packed out. I'm not too sure Nefert would have been too happy about that at the time. But anyway, uh, we're here at the, 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 the last one, virtual user group of the year. Um, probably when we go into the early months of next year, we'll, we'll have one or two more virtual user groups. And then we'll see how things go. And we will return to the face-to-face, -face. but we, we at this point can't make any promise, promises, obviously. Um, so firstly, let me just introduce you to today's uh, speakers very briefly, because I don't want to take all of the biography uh, off them. So first of all, we've got uh, Ida Horianet from uh, Madrid, uh, who is based in Luxembourg, and she is the chapter lead uh, for the Luxembourg Viz for Social Good. So she'll be kicking us off this morning and um, you can see her there in the uh, panelist uh, window if, if you want to give a bit of a wave there either uh, and say hello uh, it'd be great and uh, we'll be talking to to you in a couple of minutes um just we'll, we'll actually we'll, we'll just go over to you for a second if you don't mind and uh i'll just ask you how is that you have some news about the weather in luxembourg we're fascinated by weather here in ireland so give us an update on what's going on there weather wise it's snowing finally <laughs> oh, you're delighted to see it okay because you don't get much snow in madrid do you really no we do actually also yes really? oh god yes yes <laughs> you're inland there's my ignorance of it and uh, okay you're all ready to go and you're you're happy enough to to kick things off this morning in a few minutes uh while we just wait for more panelists to come in and you're yes. all ready Ready to rock. Okay, that's great. Uh, I'll go over to our other speaker then, uh, all the way from uh, Roma in Italy, uh, is Valerio Giuffrida. Uh, he's joining us from the Nobel Prize winning uh, World Food Programme. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, hearing what uh, Valerio has to say um, in uh, the coming minutes, in the second half of the session after uh, Ida has had uh, her chat. Valerio, all good with you? Yes, all so good. Thank you. It's Very a good. pleasure Barbara. to be here. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to have you. And uh, are you, you're not experiencing snow in Roma today, I, I imagine, are you? Uh, no, it's just a bit cloudy, but uh, yeah. yeah, not bad good. for good. December. Good. And I'm, I'm delighted when we were talking before, uh, you, you mentioned that you're, you're not a massive football fan, but you are a Roma fan, which is the most important, uh, most important thing. Yes, if you are from Rome, it's quite important to be a Roma fan. And that's, that's, uh, that's controversial, Valerio. The, the, the Laziali would have something to say about that, but there you I'm go. I'm sure. <laughs> okay, that's great. Valerio, we'll be talking to you in a few minutes. Um, so listen, guys, I think what we're going to do, it's 11, it's about to go 11.35. So I think uh, you're not, you haven't uh, come along to listen to me talking. So what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to hand you over to uh, Ida straight away. Uh, myself and Valeria are going to uh, take our cameras off and uh, we're going to go on mute. And Ida, without further ado, it's over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen. There yeah. we go. That's looking good, Ida. So you can go on ahead there and uh, we're, we're looking forward to hear what you have to say. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So hi, everyone. I'm super excited to be here today with you, sharing my lunchtime to talk about the wonderful initiative that is Viz for Social Good. So um, I'm going to introduce myself very quickly. Then we are going to talk about what uh, Viz for Social Good is and some figures about the organization and the most important, how to get involved and how does that work as a volunteer, as a non-profit and as a local chapter leader. And then at the very end, because, um, because uh, last, uh, last month's project 
was about the organization itself. I prepare a visualization that includes all these. So a bit about myself, I am Spanish from Madrid, but I am currently living in, in Luxembourg where I've worked in, in projects related to data integration, data analysis, data engineering for about uh, nine to 10 years. I started uh, supporting this for social good uh, as a volunteer. And after a while, I wanted to help a bit more. So I became um, a chapter leader for Luxembourg, um, hoping to reach out uh, to the local community of uh, data analysts, but also to, um, to the nonprofit. I am using Tableau for about se six to seven years. And the best part of it, it's been the wonderful, the wonderful community that Tableau has that has helped me so much. So thank you. Okay, let's get started. So what is this for social good? This for social good um, is an initiative that helps nonprofits to understand their data and to visualize their impact. So there is all kind of situations. There are uh, organizations that know very well their data. They collect it in a very structured way. They know exactly what are the possibilities of the data and how to visualize it, but they don't have the resources to do it. So in that case, we will help them with the visualization. There are nonprofits that uh, collect data here and there, and they know more or less uh, uh, where the data is, but they don't know all the potential that data has. And there are, there are organizations that are doing an amazing job, but they don't know yet what they can do with the data if they collect it. So we are supporting them and guiding, guiding them through the process to get to a point where we can run a project with the data they collected and show the impact of the, of the organization. And for that, we get the support of the data visualization community. So just some figures about the about the V for Social Good. It was launched in 2017 by Chloe Tseng. And since then, uh, they have run 32 projects with 30 different organizations in 13 different countries. And this has been done thanks to the support of uh, 333 volunteers, a beautiful number. And they are from all over the world. And thanks to the... Um, to the 19 chapter leaders. Uh, we will see afterwards about the chapter leaders, but uh, they are also all over the world in 12 countries. And uh, some cities, they have more than one chapter leader. Okay, so I'm gonna move this here. So how do you get involved? There are three main ways of getting involved. Um, in this for social good. The first one is as a volunteer. So uh, if you are a data analyst or just someone that loves uh, to do data analysis and visualization, you would be joining one of the projects as a volunteer. The second option is to become a chapter leader in case you want to organize in-person or online events. So this can be anything from a kickoff a session to introduce a new project to your local community, to hands-on a workshop where you will help um, the analysts to build something together to submit it for the, for the project, or to a closing session to discuss the results of the people in your area. So it can be anything uh, where you are supporting this for social good to reach the community uh, in your area. And finally, the third option is uh, if you are a nonprofit and you would like to, um, to collaborate with this for social good, you can discuss um, uh, your objectives and launch a new project. So how does, how does that work actually, if, uh, if you decide to become a, a volunteer? So first of all, you need to register on the website of this for social good. And every time we will have a, a new project, you will get notified. Afterwards, you get access to the data and to all the information available related to the project. Um, logos, objectives, um, uh, images, uh, anything that is related to that project. 
And you also get the opportunity to join the, the Slack conversation where you can ask questions about the data set if something is not clear. Uh, you can exchange opinions with other participants. So it's a really dynamic uh, session. And finally, you visualize the data. So you can decide to do it uh, by yourself if you prefer to work on your own, or you can participate in one of the one of the in-person or online events. Now mostly online events only. <laughs> and at the end of the of the project, you submit your proposal, uh, filling in the online form, and you post it in Twitter uh, hashtag Vix for Social Good. So that you can get access to see also all the other submissions from the other participants. At the very end, when we close the project, we typically have um, a wrap-up session with the with the nonprofit where they will speak a bit more about the about their work, but also discuss uh, why they have select, selected the um, certain visualizations and how they are going to use them. So you actually get to see the impact you are making with your collaboration. I hope it sounds good. And something I really like about the Vis for Social Good is that it's really for everyone. I'm, I'm calling that here uh, volunteering from zero to hero. And this is the one thing I would like you to keep from today's session, if there is one thing to keep, is that this is open to absolutely everyone. So if you are new to data visualization and you are learning a new VIS uh, tool like Tableau and you want to practice, this is for you. So you will download the, the data set, uh, play with it in Tableau, see what you can get out of it, share, uh, share your results with the community, you will get support, you will get ideas from other participants. So you can really learn from this uh, experience. I said, participate, learn, improve, and repeat. And at the end, you will move to the next level. The next level for me, it's where I see myself, for example, you know how to do data analysis, probably it's your day-to-day -day at work, but you don't get as often the opportunity to work on exciting projects, to test new techniques, to see different data sets. This is the place where you can really reinvent yourself. You can try um, charts that you wouldn't do in your day-to-day -day dashboards. This is the place to try things for people that already have the experience. And finally, we have the data stars. I wanted to include a, an example of a, a data star of this month. It's uh, the dashboard from uh, some persons that was a, a Tableau Public a bit of the day. What a better way of keep shining with your skills than supporting nonprofits and helping them show their impact. So this is an initiative for everyone, a place to, to start, a place to keep improving and a place to shine. So you are all very welcome to participate in our project. And moreover, there is a couple of things that I find uh, very convenient and very nice about this for social good personally, is that the, the projects run for three, four weeks. So you really have plenty of time to work on it. You have time to try something, forget about it, go back and work on it, start a new idea, discuss with other people, see what others are doing, and still submit something without much stress. Secondly, the data, the images, the logos, everything you need to create a great visualization is provided. So you don't have to spend any time um, figuring out uh, how, to, how to get the data. This is already there, you just need to work on the visualization. Third, you can get inspiration from, from other volunteers. So sometimes you are a bit stuck, you don't really know what to do, so you just go to Twitter, you see hash, you follow hashtag this uh, for social good, and you will see plenty of submissions. You are not going to do the same, but it's all inspiring, and you get plenty of ideas. And finally, by attending the, um, the closing events, you can meet the organizers at the NGOs, and you can really see the impact of your work. So for all of these things, I think um, 
I hope to see you all in the next project as volunteers. Otherwise, if um, you want to get involved as a nonprofit, how does that look like? So first of all, reach out to us. If um, you see that there are uh, local chapter leaders in your region, have a chat with them. Otherwise, you can contact any team member, uh, anyone uh, at Vis for Social Good. There is also an online form you can fill in uh, to give us some information about your project. But uh, please don't be afraid about the amount of information we are requesting because what is important for us is to have a chat with you as a nonprofit and to understand where you are with your data and what you want to achieve so that together we can figure out what is the, the best project for you. Afterwards, uh, collect a bit of information about what you are looking for, what's your audience, what is the data you've collected so far, and anything you think it's important. And we will guide you to prepare the data, to launch the project, we will agree on the deadline. And the last step is just to select uh, one or more visualizations that you will be using in your, in your communication channels. And finally, you can join Beach for Social Good as a local chapter leader. As I mentioned at the beginning, uh, local chapter leaders are organizing events to support uh, local communities. Um, we have chapters in different cities, as you can see in the map, and I will show you afterwards in the visualization. First of all, check if there is already a local chapter in your region and reach out because uh, you can team up to create events. They mostly need uh, some support from your side. Otherwise, you can always create a new chapter. Um, if there is none yet, there is a, a form on the website uh, and the team will get back to you. And finally, uh, organize events uh, in person or online, or online events to, to support us during the project. So now the VIGs. Um, as, as I said already, uh, our nonprofit for the last month was ourselves. So we collected all the data about the, the last three years of project uh, at VIGs for Social Good, and we asked our volunteers to visualize uh, our own impact. So uh, I decided to, to create a dashboard uh, where I am not only uh, showing the, the impact, but it's also full of um, calls to action where you can find all the links I have discussed in this presentation. So if you want to become a volunteer, uh, you will have the, the, the links to register, the links to the site where we publish the project, et cetera, et cetera. So everything I have uh, discussed here today, you will find it in this dashboard. I'm going to open it uh, shortly in Tableau Public. Here we go. So, um, first of all, this is like a, what I was saying before, that you learn something new from every project. Personally, I don't get the opportunity to work as often as I would like to in maps. So I wanted to try this uh, source destination mapping with the uh, make point and make, li make line at Tableau. And that was a perfect opportunity because um, um, here I'm showing all the, all the projects um, this for Social Good has worked on. And here I'm showing every submission from every volunteer and where the volunteer comes from and where the nonprofit was based. So I thought it was a wonderful way to practice. Um, sorry, this happened, it's the line. Oh. Okay, this is looking a bit weird. I'm gonna try again. There we go. So yes, you can explore basically any of the, of the past projects and see who participated and from where they come from. I think I should be here. See, if you also know the volunteers, there you go. So for example, I submitted a project uh, 
for a non-profit in Montreal and I am based in Luxembourg. So that was my piece of learning in this, in this dashboard. But here you will find, as I said, all the links that you need to know more about this for social good. Here you will also find Here you will also find all the local chapter leaders if you want to check. As I said, in some, in some places we have more than one. And here you have the, the links to register as chapter leader if you are interested. Going back here. So that's it on my side. I hope you're all uh, happy to join us soon and I hope to see you in the next project. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. I am available and yeah, just reach out. Thank you everyone for listening. Ida, absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much for that. And uh, that, that viz at the end is, is uh, absolutely lovely. Uh, our, our consultant, uh, Rob Carroll, is a big fan of those types of visualizations. So he'll be delighted to see that. Uh, in there. Um, so actually, could I ask you a favor? If you have uh, a link to that viz, uh, there's actually all requests coming in for that. Will you, can you stick that in the chat uh, for me, please? Sure, I'll do uh, that. So people can go to your Tableau public profile and, uh, and have a look at that. Um, if anybody has any questions, please fire them into the uh, question and answers uh, section there at the bottom of your screen. Uh, it'd be great. I had a quick one for you, Ida, if I could. Um, I might I might have missed it, but it, it's just a question that I have. If somebody has an idea uh, for you know a campaign or whatever it might be around Viz for Social Good, how how open are they to that, and and how how, how does somebody get that off the ground? Do you know? So you mean that you know a nonprofit that uh, would like to launch a project? Yeah, something like that, or maybe you, maybe a person has an idea and they just go, "If I if I go to this nonprofit and then I come to you, how, how to how to get the ball rolling on on projects?" I suppose. Totally open to that. So just reach out to us and we will discuss the idea. Sure. Okay, so you're always open for that. Okay, that's brilliant. Uh, okay, great. I also wanted to just mention that we, as you said there, and as you have in your your visualization, we do have a chapter here in uh, in Ireland, in Dublin specifically, and it's headed up by Louise Shorten. Uh, most of you who um, come or who came to the real or the face-to-face -face Tableau user groups will know Louise very well because she was at all of them and uh, she's great and a, a, a big advocate uh, of the use of Tableau and data visualization. So what I've done is I've put Louise's contact details uh, in the uh, chat there uh, and uh, for those of you who didn't know she's joined the information lab which we're delighted to say and uh, so you'll see that in the uh, in in the in her uh, email handle and, and the like so look uh, I, I don't see any other questions coming in there at the moment uh, so there might be some at the end uh, there are still some participants coming in so I'm delighted to see that and uh, there's good numbers there guys so that's fantastic thanks a lot for coming um, but at this point, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask uh, Valerio if he could uh, unmute and if he could show us uh, his, uh, his apartment and face and we'll hand over to him. Ida, thank you very much for that presentation. It was fantastic. Really, really clear. And, and I hope it's inspired a few people to join uh, and be part of Viz for Social Good. Um, Valerio, you're still keeping well, I take it? Uh, yes, uh, all good. You're happy to proceed. So what I'll do is I'll hand over to Valeria from the World Food Programme and uh, thank you very much. Guys, if you have any questions, please pop them into the Q&A uh, box there at the bottom of your screen. Valerio, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I'll start with uh, my presentation. Uh, I prepared, uh, I hope you can all see my screen. I prepared this presentation to explain uh, a bit uh, what uh, WFP does uh, globally, uh, quite very quickly touching on the basics and uh, then uh, more specific to the division in which uh, I work, uh, that is the research uh, uh, assessment and monitoring uh, division. And uh, specifically on why I choose uh, this topic. Uh, so the, um, as you can see, the 
framing the ever-changing. It's a bit of the attempt to uh, find out all those uh, items that can contribute to, to define uh, food security. Uh, clearly, the World Food Program uh, is a, a United Nations program that uh, deals with, um, with food security globally. And uh, here you can see some, uh, some of the um, key numbers for this year and the past year. Um, basically, our work is divided in uh, three uh, big blocks, I would say. Uh, first of all, we need to know who we need to assist uh, and uh, uh, where and uh, how much assistance is needed uh, and how to bring that assistance uh, to them. So we have a very strong logistic component, but uh, that analysis uh, is uh, key to both prepositioning and uh, responding to emergency emergencies. For these reasons, we have uh, implemented uh, well, quite strong uh, uh, data management rules uh, inside the organization, uh, as we are uh, more than, well, we are 17,000 17, people. Uh, so it's a big organization and the data coming from many different countries can, of course, have very different characteristics and we need to be able to uh, manage all this together, uh, both at a local level and a centralized level. Um, so this is uh, what uh, WFP does, uh, but uh, uh, in order to understand who we need to assist, we need to understand uh, uh, what is the um, food security situation in uh, the countries we operate. Uh, so uh, we not only need to be able to measure uh, what is the food security situation, but also uh, able to understand uh, what are the key determinants uh, that uh, uh, contribute to the to the food security status in a in a country and more specifically in a single communities. So we need to find uh, those uh, measurable indicators that allow us to understand the um, all, all these elements. Uh, for this reason, we resorted to the. Uh, definition of food security that was given uh, at the World Food Summit in 95, uh, which uh, uh, distinguished the, the food security into four main pillars. So we need to understand if food is available, accessible, if it is possible to use it for um, to achieve uh, um, to uh, well to lead a um, healthy life. Um, and uh, if there is uh, enough stability in the in the country and for um, the population to access this food at all times. So in this uh, case, stability is basically a set of cross-cutting indicators that we want to integrate together uh, in these different pillars. Uh, so uh, to in order to do that, uh, basically we have seen that we have uh, uh, restricted resources a number of countries that have uh, different needs and we need to be able to, to rank those needs in some way and to um, measure the, the food security situation. Uh, so we have resorted to a composite index that was a quite long undertaking from my team uh, myself uh, and um, Oscar Caccavalle, uh, we did a publication on uh, world development uh, that uh, includes all the analysis that we did to, to build uh, this index. But of course, this type of publication is not uh, easily accessible for everyone. Uh, so uh, that's where basically our uh, collaboration with uh, our partnership with Tableau Foundation and uh, our more than six years of experience in using Tableau uh, came handy and uh, we basically built uh, a dashboard that includes both the results from the from the paper so very technical elements and uh, elements that are more useful to decision makers so that can uh, they can uh, for example around the countries uh, in a, and and see the changes uh, over time um, Right now, we are in the process of updating uh, this uh, database uh, as uh, some of the um, macro indicators that are included this in, in this index uh, are updated uh, at, uh, well, 
lower pace. Uh, so the lat latest data right now, it's 2017, but we are uh, ingesting 2018 and 19 data to inform this dashboard. I think we can uh, go a bit outside of the presentation and uh, look at the dashboard itself and um, how we structure the different uh, data points. Uh, the different visualizations. So we have, uh, of course, a map visualization uh, that uh, lets you explore and compare the status of the index in different countries, uh, as well as uh, um, be able to, sorry, because it's loading again, it was preloaded. Uh, so to, to make comparison between countries and uh, see also the evolution of this index uh, over time for them. Um, and then uh, not only to see the situation at a high level where we only observe the, the final result of the aggregation of these multiple indicators, uh, but we can also uh, drill down to the single country and uh, look at the specifics uh, that are uh, in this case, uh, the, the year to year change uh, for, for the country. And uh, we can see, for example, very easily the, the deterioration of the situation in, in Syria or, um, or the volatility that uh, affected uh, Iraq, which of course is connected with uh, conflict events, as well as more chronic situation as uh, in South Sudan, where a combination of elements uh, causes uh, the, the food security to be very low in that country. Uh, then, uh, of course, at glance, we can see the, the ranking of the countries according to this index. Um, but it is also important to uh, be able to explore uh, the subcomponents. Uh, so that the information is more punctual to the decision maker. So it, what of these four pillars uh, is uh, uh, affecting the, um, the country uh, classification the most? For example, we can see in this case Afghanistan, where each single indicator has its value uh, of a higher value means uh, uh, lower availability of that, uh, well, let's say a worse food security situation. Uh, so we can see, for example, that availability drives uh, uh, a lot the, the status of, uh, of Afghanistan inside the, the, the ranking as it's uh, the highest pillar. And uh, specifically, the, it seems that the availability of uh, proteic supplies uh, is uh, very low compared to other countries uh, in, in over time. Uh, well, of course, you can explore the dashboard more. You, we added also uh, a comparison between uh, multiple countries uh, inside the uh, radar visualization. And uh, we embedded all our dashboards uh, in, uh, in our um, data visualization platform that is uh, basically mixing the uh, corporate services that are uh, already structured and those that instead are more ad hoc analysis. For example, this uh, Proteus uh, was developed uh, specifically to address uh, the, the complexity of the composi composition of this index. So we used the Tableau and we embedded the, the Tableau dashboard inside the, the website. And it is accessible from the list of reports that are here. In particular, if you click on live dashboards, you will be able to see all those that were developed using, uh, using Tableau. Um, this is done either at country office level, so specifically in the country, or uh, at the HQ level where we support the activity of the country office in implementing this type of solution. Going back to the presentation, uh, so we have seen how food security is a, a multidimensional, uh, uh, multidimensional topic that includes uh, uh, different elements, and in particular, we have seen how access it is, uh, is an important one. And uh, access is typically um, split into two uh, factors, economic access and uh, uh, physical access. In particular, WFP is uh, strongly interested in economic access because uh, part of our intervention is based on the local markets. So the um, 
the availability of the commodities uh, in the in this uh, in these places in these markets and our capacity to support the purchasing powers of the uh, population that is vulnerable to food insecurity so that is unable to uh, to buy enough food to conduct a healthy life and uh, we transfer them uh, cash assistance um, in order to buy this food um, in this case, of course, we need to be aware of the situation of, of these markets. So if there is a uh, hyperinflation or uh, food is uh, locally not, uh, uh, not available, we are likely to see these uh, elements reflected in anticipation on market prices. For this reason, WFP has uh, um, a, a huge database of uh, market prices from more than a thousand locations uh, in uh, 90, 90, around 90 countries right now. And um, we have historical data from all this uh, location and we can uh, see how prices develop. Now in the picture, we are seeing one uh, local market in uh, uh, Turele uh, in, in the Northern, uh, part of the Warrap in South Sudan. So it's a, basically a market that is almost bordering with Sudan. It's an area where uh, conflict has been ongoing for uh, around 50 years. And uh, South Sudan is now one of the uh, youngest country in the world, uh, the youngest uh, that was uh, founded in 2011. Um, so, of course, in this uh, uh, situation of uh, instability, and uh, as you can see, I mean, not uh, a very strong organization of the market, uh, we need to be aware of these things and we need to observe how the um, price develops. Uh, for this reason, uh, we explore the price data also through uh, visualizations. So in this case, we can see um, how different uh, um, regional offices uh, have organized uh, the same information that we have uh, at a centralized level in, in different ways. So in uh, the Dakar region, for example, uh, prepared this uh, Tableau dashboard, uh, which is in, available in two languages, considering most of the countries are French speaking. And uh, uh, this visualization is uh, basically uh, collecting all the information at, uh, at local level, uh, available at uh, admin, uh, admin one level. And uh, it's um, letting you explore the evolution of prices uh, in, uh, so with this regional overview, but you can also uh, drill down to the local, over local overview and explore the information at country level, uh, where you can also select uh, multiple commodities uh, and look how the prices of uh, different uh, type of food are, uh, are developing, uh, but also uh, non-food items uh, open. Like uh, for example, uh, we had uh, much more monitoring uh, in the current months of um, soap and other hygiene items that are all of course, useful to, um, uh, to keep COVID away, let's say. And uh, in this visualization, so you can explore both the uh, evolution over time of the prices, uh, but you can also uh, dig down to different uh, type of commodities. Mm. Then uh, another example of uh, uh, why this is important uh, is uh, um, the, the exploration of the stability of, um, of the economy. As, uh, of course, if the economy is not stable, uh, you would have uh, to, to cope in different ways with uh, the difficulty of assessing the food. So imagine, for example, a situation of hyperinflation like in Yemen or Venezuela, where you can have uh, uh, the, the value of your currency that is depreciating uh, basically by the day. Uh, so uh, you need uh, to, to be aware of that uh, and to be able to, to control how the situation is evolving because of course, uh, thinking of a, a cash-based intervention where you give money to people 
it's very difficult in this context uh, as uh, uh, you don't know if it is possible to use that money for buying food and you don't know if the money will have the same value uh, by the day the, the beneficiary will receive the money and if it will be possible to uh, redeem what we uh, basically what we contribute what we assist the, the beneficiary with so here we are presenting uh, two, of course, uh, cases uh, like uh, Venezuela and where the situation of hyperinflation was clearly present and uh, for which we resorted on a um, daily, basically, monitoring of the evolution of uh, currencies. And uh, in order to do this monitoring, uh, we developed uh, an ad hoc relation in Tableau and we embedded it inside uh, our website. And uh, we started showing uh, basically the hotspots, the key hotspots in which uh, uh, currencies are debating, and uh, uh, let the, each regional bureau uh, explore the, um, the specific situation in the region. So, um, okay, I need to open that one. Um, so inside the, oh, sorry. Inside the e Explorer, you can access the visualization on currencies. And now, if you have also some questions on the way we set up the infrastructure, I will be able to answer those uh, in, uh, in the Q&A. For example, the technical questions on the communication between uh, the, the databases where we store the data and the Tableau server that hosts the, the visualization and also how it would be possible to make these data sources available externally. As we strongly rely on APIs for data sharing, uh, but of course to connect this data uh, through API, we would need a, um, a web, uh, web data connector uh, for, for Tableau specific for our APIs, and uh, we currently don't have that. Uh, but you can see here how the, we are basically monitoring the situation of uh, country devaluation in different, uh, currency devaluation in different countries, uh, and we highlight uh, quite quickly uh, in a visual way the different hotspots. Uh, for example, we can see the evolution of the Syrian pound over time and how this is uh, uh, losing value uh, compared uh, with the um, US dollar. And also uh, where available, uh, we have uh, the parallel exchange rate. So the non-official exchange rate, which is actually paid by the, um, by the people in the, in the country and in a specific location in different markets uh, to exchange their currency with, uh, with a, a strong currency. With a, uh, with US dollar, for example. Um, I hope this uh, gave you a nice overview of what we do with, uh, with Tableau in, uh, inside WFP. Of course, we have uh, other use cases. Uh, for example, we also uh, look uh, at the combination of these, uh, um, of these different elements, for example, currencies, uh, uh, global prices and local prices uh, in the quarterly market monitor, which is another product uh, that is also uh, published inside the, our data visualization platform. And uh, uh, this has uh, uh, a lot. This is bringing together again a lot of elements, uh, such as the, the, the evolution of inflation and currencies, and it's brought uh, inside the technical discussions. Uh, in, uh, in also in interagency um, in interagency meetings uh, where uh, the situation of uh, food security is uh, discussed uh, um, in detail. Uh, so, for example, uh, uh, in, uh, in interagency meetings uh, between the food-oriented uh, UN organization, let's say, like uh, the Food and Agriculture Organization FAO or IFAD. And uh, also it's often consulted by the World Bank uh, and uh, IFRI or other research institutes. Um, an additional point, we always try to make our data public, which is uh, uh, currently true for all these dashboards. So if you access the dashboards from DataVids, 
you will be able to download the, the data sets that are be, um, behind this. But if you want to engage in more automation, I believe uh, the, the way forward would be to develop a, a web data connector for, uh, for the APIs that we are that are available right now on, on these data sources. Um, again, I hope uh, this was inspiring for you and uh, happy to hear your feedback and questions. Thank you. Valerio, thank you very much uh, for that. I, I have to say, I was looking at some of the, the, the dashboards there and um, they were pretty incredible. Uh, some of them, to be honest with you, the, the amount of detail in them is, is really um, unbelievable. David Okineja, who's a, a former uh, TUG contributor himself, uh, he's just put in the comments box there, uh, the chat, sorry, I should say, uh, fascinating information on a worthy organization. My question, what's the most surprising thing this data has revealed on food insecurity? Good question. <laughs> Yes, it is a good question. On food insecurity, we were actually, well, uh, let's say the positive aspect that uh, came from this indicator was its capacity, for example, uh, to capture um, fast changing situations, which uh, other indicators are not as able to, to deal with. Uh, for example, the way that conflict is uh, quickly captured by this indicator as one of the determinants of security was very important to us as we were able to demonstrate how the, how the situation uh, in, of food security in Syria was, uh, was developing. And actually, well, this is not uh, described, I mean, this was not uh, coming up from uh, a dashboard, but directly from the data as we received it. For example, uh, the most striking example was uh, when uh, through remote surveys, uh, so phone calls uh, to uh, beneficiaries and uh, key informants in uh, markets, uh, we understood uh, about uh, the situation of, uh, um, of uh, besiege of some cities in Syria that was not uh, known to our program uh, officers. And so we were able to know uh, real time how the situation was uh, deteriorating in one of those, uh, those cities. And uh, uh, how to basically escalate through our management the request for a humanitarian corridor to be created uh, for, for assisting the population. As uh, indeed, we had the strong evidence that the, the situation for the population was, was deteriorating. Sorry, there's another question that I had that's, that kind of struck me at the beginning of what you were, were were saying and that that was around the data rules okay so you kind of touched on 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 data rules and, and I'm, I'm curious to know because obviously like your visualization is only as good as the data that you collect right i mean uh, i mean they can look pretty but i mean ultimately you want to get the real the real picture so how critical are those data rules and and how difficult is it to get people to buy into it and play by those rules if you know what i mean Yes, uh, yeah. I uh, yeah, essentially I, it's the most important thing, really. Yes, I un understand the issue, and of course, again, being a very big organization that has also a decentralized nature. So, for example, we cannot really uh, impose our rules uh, to country offices for collecting data, and we also deal with uh, um, a big number of partners. Uh, um, national statistical offices, uh, uh, ministries, uh, uh, more often ministries of agriculture. Uh, and we have to host uh, and deal with this data in a way that is uh, accepted by them and useful to both. So uh, I try to follow a very utilitarian rule. Uh, so we tried to make our systems that ingest the data very useful for the country office and very flexible to ingest this data. Uh, so there is a data governance uh, software uh, that we developed uh, basically ad hoc to ingest the data uh, from different sources. Uh, specifically, um, this data bridge is basically available to all uh, WFP offices in the world to submit their uh, unstructured or semi-structured Excel files. And then, uh, um, 
match that information or that structure with a standard that is provided by, by our central database. In this way, they don't have to uh, deal, for example, with a lot of data transformation outside of the application, which is uh, usually not very replicable, uh, but we ask them to do this data transformation directly inside the platform so that everything is uh, documented uh, and uh, we know the, dif the difference between the original data. I know, I mean, this might sound very abstract at this point, but for example, I have many different ways in many different country offices of dealing with dates. So uh, you can have a date that has a year, month, day, or you have three different columns with year, month, and day, and so on. And then you need to have inside this tool a way to treat that data. Uh, of course, uh, you, I mean, this is very basic, of course, uh, as, a, as an example, but we have uh, more um, elaborated rules inside the, this data governance uh, applications. Uh, for example, checking the presence of outliers uh, based on historical data uh, or um, based on the other data that you are submitting. So if there is a, one observation that is completely outside of the, uh, statistical distribution behind the rest of the of the data set, we uh, flag uh, an alert to the person submitting the data and we say, maybe you want to double check this data point, if this is correct. And uh, then the data ownership, of course, is in the end of the country office or the ministry. We cannot go and change the official data from a ministry. So we sometimes just have to take what we get. And we are very happy with it right now. Okay, well that's good. Okay, uh, and uh, there was there was one other question I had, but I, I just I'll just pause for a minute if I can. There's just a, a couple of things uh, to announce. I'll come back to that question if if I may. So uh, obviously we, we're not doing face to face, folks, and normally you'd see me running around the place with the camera and taking photos. Uh, I have taken some screenshots, and we're going to fire them up as we always do with these things on on uh, the the information labs LinkedIn page, right? So if you if you I put the link to that in there. I've also put a link to both Valerio and Ida's LinkedIn pages, if that's okay with you guys, so you you know people can connect with you and uh, see what you're you're up to on that. Also, for those of you who are, are who are here, who are Tableau uh, users and who would like to show off what you do, and I mean that in the positive sense, uh, please get in touch with me. Um, I've put my email address there, johnny.butler at theinformationlab.ie, and we're always on the lookout for uh, speakers for the next um, Tableau user group uh, and and those uh, and and other events uh, indeed. Um, so uh, I also wanted to mention just one other thing. Uh, there's a very special um, uh, event that is going to be coming up uh, towards the end of um, January. We think it's going to be the week of the 18th of January. All right. So Louise Shorten from the Information Lab Ireland and Katie Kilroy from Arlo Technologies down in Cork are going to be hosting the first Data Plus Women uh, Ireland event. OK, so this is kind of a it's an organization that's been around for a while uh, and there's chapters, you know, right across the world. Uh, uh, this will be the first event in Ireland. All right. So it's a community and meetup group for women who work in with and around data. And the basic aim is to promote and celebrate the achievements and, and success of women working in the industry and, and it's also to uh, give them a platform to, to share their knowledge and, and experiences of um, in data, not just in Tableau, but in, in, in data as well. Um, so if you want to uh, get involved or if you want to find out more about that, again, I will put uh, both email addresses, sorry, it's going to be a bit rudimentary, but you, you get the picture, into the chat room uh, there. And, and don't hesitate to get in touch. Uh, very approachable people. And uh, it's one of those things, even if you're starting out, uh, it's these kind of things, guys, where you're going to learn the most about Tableau and you're going to get lots of tips and tricks on how it's used uh, about that. My final question for you, Valerio, and if anybody else has any other questions, please put them into the Q&A box there at the bottom of your screen. You said that um, the World Food Programme has been using Tableau for, is it six years? I want to know how much of a game changer it has been for the World Food Programme. 
so the, before Tableau, it, it's uh, unavoidable to make the comparison with the before Tableau time. Uh, basically, before Tableau, we were uh, trying to design our different uh, dashboards uh, uh, with tools that are more complex to use and that usually lead to the development of an ad hoc uh, website. So you would uh, build uh, a website using, well, whatever technical framework you want to use uh, uh, from well, different uh, languages. And uh, of course, that type of website is much less flexible and it requires the, the work of a, a technical person dedicated to that. Uh, the, having the analyst directly dealing with the data, it helps really a lot because uh, while you do the data exploration, uh, you find out what is more relevant to bring uh, basically up uh, in the center at the center of the visualization or uh, make it part of the story. Uh, it is not something that is often easy to explain to, to an engineer that instead is dedicated to front end development. Uh, this uh, so we have a component that is basically mocking up uh, the visualization of more uh, corporate solutions that are intended to be more um, less flexible. And instead, we also have the, the possibility to put in production, so to directly show to the world or whoever accessing the website, uh, the different uh, work that we do. The other element of, uh, for which Tableau was a game changer was the possibility to, for example, publish uh, data sources in a central uh, uh, server, and then having the different country office picking up the same data source, which means completely eliminating the, the risk of discrepancy between uh, data sources. And uh, it's, I mean, it's very easy to do. You just search the data source that you want to connect to, and uh, you then start playing with it. Okay, that's fantastic. Guys, if there are, we're, we're a little bit early, but if there are no further questions, uh, and, and I'm, I'm still, I, I, would, I would welcome one or two, if you have any, no problem, absolutely. Um, but if, there, if, there's, if, if, if there's no further questions, I think what we've done there is uh, we've, we've had a great uh, virtual Tableau user group, and we are really uh, grateful to Ida. Uh, thank you very much for dialing in from Luxembourg, and I hope you, get out to build a snowman uh, or snow person uh, in the next while. Uh, is it still snowing there, Ida? No, it's over. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> but oh, it was God. nice. It was nice while it lasted. Well, listen, thank you very much uh, for, for your contribution. And it's great. I hope people get in touch uh, and I hope uh, all goes well uh, over the over the coming weeks. And uh, we'll, we'll hear from you again. Uh, in terms of Viz for Social Good, you're you're re really very kind for contributing and and uh, taking the time out to to come along. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah, oh, not at all. Great. And Valerio, uh, tante grazie. I I look forward to meeting you sometime in the Fiddler's Elbow uh, near Santa Maria Maggiore, and uh, drinking a pint uh, there. Uh, we were discussing off camera. Uh, the, the places we knew in common in Rome. Uh, so uh, that'll be interesting in the future and uh, uh, hopefully we'll see you sometime uh, there. Listen, guys, um, if there's no further questions, uh, we're getting lots of comments coming in. James Glynn, thanks very much. Very interesting. Uh, Matt Heron, uh, great work at the WFP. Do you have a link to the data viz, actually, Valerio? Uh, it's it's very easy, so it's uh, database.vam.wfp.org. There it and, is. Uh, uh, I posted it in, in the chat. Yeah, that's gone into the chat there. And uh, also David Okaneja. Uh, thanks, Johnny, Ada and Valerio. And uh, one new message, Patrick Cavanagh down in Cork. How are you, Paddy? Uh, super job. Thank you for sharing your work. And well, thanks, Johnny, for organizing. You're welcome. No problem. OK, brilliant stuff, guys. We'll leave it at that. And uh, again, thank you very much. And listen, have a great Christmas, guys. And uh, we will see you in the new year. And uh, over and out for now. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. -bye. Take Bye. care, guys. I'll stay on and make sure everybody goes out the door.